This is Upper Deck Sketch Artist Marcia Dye, and you're listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Ian Taylor and you are listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. It's not a podcast about nuns, but it is your weekly digest of hobby goodness. Brought to you by the Marvel Cards Fan Collective, an awesome community of card collectors and creators. You can find our two groups on Facebook, details of which are at the end of this podcast, so come check us out. With me as always is my co-pilot in all things Marvel Cards. He's in for his annual service and all he needs is an oil change and a great big cuddle. It's knowing rad. I love it. Annual. Nice. Good hints. Drops. I love it. I feel bad that bring it in. I'm here. I'm here. I'm coming closer. Come on. on I'm hugging you. Good. There we go. Virtual hug. Nice. You know what? Let's hug the listeners as well. Come on. Come on. Listen. Come in. Okay. Come in. Huggy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hang on. A lot not, of people not you. I don't right actually now. like you in real life, so go away. You, everyone else oh can come in. Oh, my God. This go. is an all-inclusive hug. It okay? is an all-inclusive hug. All right, Unless right. there's restraining orders. Uh, no. Uh, well, the only restraints are on my wrists on this one. Anyway, right. Let's let's move on. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> Traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Standard. 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 Standard fare. Um, can I just say, for, for those Please. who love it, when we go off the topic of Marvel cards as soon as we started the show, because we know there's at least one person in Canada who thinks that, um, I finished watching Book of Bob Fett on Friday evening, and it's Sunday now, um, and uh, loved it. It's amazing. Um, and for those um, who haven't seen it, there will be spoilers. There may be spoilers ahead. I uh, can't remember the next line. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's kind of Mandalorian season 2.5. Great song. Yeah, definitely 0. 0.5. Really. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's, it's Boba Fett up to a certain point, but it's just, it's just kind of a story device to get Mandalorian off on his next adventures. Ah, oh, just great. I think, yeah, it's interesting because the two episodes that were very Mandalorian heavy definitely moved it into this kind of new <laughs> kind of catch up moment. Yeah. Um, it felt like a recap episode before the third season, those two episodes. Yeah. 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 That was really yeah. interesting to see. Um, that decision there. Yeah. You know, I think the book of Boba Fett, I really loved it. I thought it was fun. A lot of really cool things in there. I'm not a huge fan of Robert Rodriguez direction in this particular Mm. piece, just because it it very much at times felt like, I think this thing's going to be cool. So let's include it rather than kind of considering the story, you know, and the pacing is very weird. But oh. it just, it, you know, and you can see the difference because the Mandalorian episodes are directed by somebody else. Yeah. So one's yeah. by Bryce Howard and the other one's by... Uh, Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni, maybe? Yeah. That's it, yeah. So there's, you know, that difference there. But I, I it was a lot of fun. It was so cool to wake up every Wednesday and have that. I'm so glad you finished it finally because <laughs> I've been dying to talk about it, honestly. I um, I, t- I tell you what, the, I, I, we will get on to talking about Marvel cars, but I do, I do want to talk to you about it because um, one of the interesting things was uh, you say about the pacing. I thought the last episode was actually the weakest because it was just one long fight. And it was just like, I agree. some of it was just like, oh, just cut it out. Um, yeah. The kids on the scooters made no sense whatsoever. Um, I did not like and, that and at all. They that were, was a they bad were, decision. Yeah, they, they weren't good. But I like, the, I like the fact that they were there for a reason to introduce the concept of someone who does body modifications. I thought that they, was great. Yeah, because they wreck on Fennec Shand, so you know how she, she survived. Um, but then the first four episodes, when you got to the end of his back-to-tank flashbacks, my wife was like, oh, thank goodness me, we're over halfway through the season, and now the story can start. And then the story changes to the Mandalorian. (laughs) I know. Um, It was a shame because we were done with the flashbacks and we were done with all this kind of character building. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it was a shame. It was was a shame. I I don't know if I would have. Huh? You could have done the season in one episode less. I think they could have done the season with a much better structure narratively. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the issue. You know what I mean? Seeing that, that tank every beginning of every episode three or four times in some episodes it just it was very repetitive and i don't not sure why that decision was there what i really loved is how star wars is now talking about sand people yeah and kind of using them metaphorically as like native americans and it's very it's very it's very very interesting 
and it, and it makes that whole world so much more interesting. I've been pushing for equal rights for Sam people since the early 80s. So, yeah, <laughs> that, should finally, yeah, exactly, that should be a bumper yeah. sticker. Exactly. That should be a bumper sticker. Jawas have it. feelings too. Jawas have feelings too. Um, well, that, anyway. was my, that was one of my favorite things from the Mandalorian seasons was his ability to talk like to these different cultures and have yeah. these words. Like, because it's a bounty hunter. You know what I mean? You kind of have to. So, and it very much is indicative of like the Western story. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of cool. Very it cool. is cool. It is cool. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm, I'm fine with Tatooine. Let's just, let's, let's go somewhere else for a bit now. I'm dying that's to the, go to Mandalore. Like, that's let's the do this. Thing. Yeah. Well, that's the beautiful yeah. thing. I love the fact that you had that flashback where you saw it getting nuked. Oh, oh that was oh, so that was crazy. So that was so dark as well. Um, that was good. But I also love Amy Sedaris character saying that she dated ah, Jow once. And then there was a little throwaway line when she said, kind of furry. furry. <laughs> kind of furry. I, like, I love it. And it I love it. I was you. like, so good. So very like me. I'm, 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 I'm like the elf Jawa because I'm like really tall. Okay, but I'm yeah. just as hairy. So like yeah, we'll we have like that. that kind of. Well, I mean, you know, Will Ferrell elf. You know, I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I know where you're I going. Mean, the I'm comparison just, was it was a good comparison just because you didn't. I like was it just imagining that you and amazing. you and your beloved, given your height difference, could quite yep. happily pull off going on um, fancy dress on Halloween with you as a Tuscan Raider and her as a Jawa. I mean, I because when you're next to each other, you'd have the perspective, and it would look right. It would look right. It would look right. We wanted to do Banjo Kazooie. I don't know if you know that N64 game from Rare. No, 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 no. no, no. It's like I mean, that was that was that was that was a thing, though. But yes, there are tons of tons of really cool cosplay ideas yeah. floating around in the oh, we could do loads. Of a household. We yeah. could do loads. Anyway, rad household. Yeah. Ah, cards, glorious cards, cold jelly and mustard. Um, I, I really need to mix it up a bit if I'm going to replace the lyrics on songs. Um, before we go any further, yep. I want to say thank you, Marcia Dye, because Marcia Dye, quite frankly, you, you are gorgeous. Your cards are gorgeous. Your vocal tones at the beginning of any episode of this podcast are gorgeous. And, um, yeah, you're awesome. So say, we thank you. We appreciate your work. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And and the and the great thing about having a new set come out, because we haven't had any for a while. And since um oh well, Metal was the last one, and then Marvel Annual, which is what we're gonna talk about this week. Yeah, baby. Um, is you get artists like showing images of their sketch cards. Oh, and I it's love that. always a treat when Marcia posts what she's been working on. It's always a treat. I mean, I was just like, she posted some in group and I was like, ah, oh, it's like doing that dribbling thing like Homer does. <laughs> it's like, it's like they look dribbling. great. They look so clean. Um, so cool. So, yeah. So um, thank you, Marcia. Um, you can find Marcia on Instagram, but for the life of me, I cannot remember her. <laughs> handle at the moment so it'll be on the tasting notes sorry marcia i should have been more prepared um but i was prepared to talk about mandalorian because i've just been looking through all the cast information on imdb before we prepared so i prepared for that but not for talking about cards it's okay. art by marcia die it is well done well done are there any hyphens in there or underscores no all one word art brilliant. by marcia die brilliant right there we go and die is spelled d-y-e by the way folks perfect it's not live and let die. It's die. Live and let die. Oh, I love that song. It's oh, a love good one. Song. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk about um, Marvel Annual uh, 2021 that we did a box break of the other week. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Trying to reach up to actually get the empty, not the empty box, uh, the open cards that I've got here so that I can be fresh in my memory. Of what's Memory going on. Fresh. So, um, I, you know, what I liked about this set? Can I just, can I just say first of all that what I love this year is that the QA is spot on. It's yes, last year I was, was really impressed by yeah, that. There was off-center cards all over the place, and the edges it gives me a lot of hope for Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm really excited. It really does. And you know what? I know a lot of people say with the sets because Marvel. Um, Spider-Man Metal Universe, we think is going to be May now, uh, is the latest. And we knew yep. from Travis that it was probably going to be kind of March, April anyway. Um, and it's definitely going to be May, probably towards the end of May, at the earliest. And I'd rather they took that time and got it right. Me too. So I'm happy to wait for it to look perfect. Yeah, I am as well. But it's driving everyone nuts. Yeah, well, a lot of people are trying to make content right now. A lot of people are trying to 
get ahead of the uh, modern market because they're getting priced down. Yeah. Everyone's hoping for new product. Well, and yeah, and, but the thing is, everyone's pre-ordering. It's not just Marvel guys pre-ordering. It's you know, yeah, it's everyone's guys. pre-ordering yeah. that set. So, that's, that's just hot. So it's crazy. Um, so I've got my stack of base cards here, and I'll tell you the interesting thing to look at it. Is it look at the side? If I show you that side of that stack, look how clean Oof, that is. Clean. And if I'd held up um, Marvel, because you know this, because you opened some Marvel yep. um, X-Men Metal Universe, you held this up and you looked at the side of a stack of cards like that, and it looked like a set of cards from the 90s that had been it kept looks, in Elastic it, it, it looked like the movie of Die Hard happened yeah. on the edges of the card. Yeah. Um, whereas these, that's like, oh. That's seriously. clean. That, that's this is highly erotic. Like, pocket. why yeah. do you keep doing that? Um, so it's great. I love it. Um, but I thought... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> love it, baby. Um, but, you know, I mean, what, what can you say about the base cards? I mean, yeah, it's tried and tested annual format. I mean, they're virtually identical in terms of the design. I think they're cool. Last I like them. It's fine. I think you they're know. clean. Got the power ratings on the back. I mean, power ratings, man. You always got me when there's power ratings. Yeah. Like, I'm a sucker for that. Power ratings. The one thing I do miss, though, and I'll, I'll say this, I'm just trying, going, trying to find... Uh, an example of them. Is so it a sleigh that you no, used to use? No, no, no. That you called no. Rosebud back in no, the day? Rosebud. Is that the reason for everything, Rosebud. Ian? Rosebud. I can't honest. find my Marvel Annual sets. Where have they gone? Norin, where have they gone? Where have I put them? I, I put them behind the MM they behind? set. They're right next to the... Sure? Yeah, so, yeah, if you look down yeah. further... Hang on. They're yeah. right in that shelf. Oh, hang on. Next to. Oh, oh there you sorry, go. missus. Sorry, sorry. I grabbed the, I grabbed the wrong thing. There we go. I don't know why you um, Here we go. Okay, cool. Right. So the, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show you a base card, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this again. This is. So this is Marvel Annual 2021. Okay. I see it. Which was oh, the that. same design as Marvel Annual 19 and 20, although Marvel Clean. Annual 19 nice and 20. Nice glass. Uh, nice. Marvel Annual 19 and 20 was off center to the max. Yes. I present to you Marvel Annual 1819. Look at the foiling. Oh, man. Where, what happened to the foiling? That's the thing. So with, with 1920, and it's carried on into 2021, they lost the foiling on the base cards. They took them down. Uh, and I think that, that Marvel Annual, to my, to my money, to this day, one of the best and most underrated base sets of any of the Marvel Annual, in fact, of recent years, full stop, is Marvel Annual 18 and 19. It's just glorious. It's That's so a nice shame. Because look, you've got the foiling around the Marvel Annual logo as well. And the that should be there. foiling. And the number's foiled. Ooh. And that's just the base card. I mean, you couldn't get that in on EPAC. You'd only get that in physical. And then, of course, you got the the SSP. But then they did color variations of it. So you've got, oh, right. you know, you you've got, the, you've got the yeah, you've got the pink, the red, the purple. Yeah, oh, here we are. And then the reds that you could only get from Combine, from the digital. Look at the look at the red. Oh, so I'm trying to get. I like that. Look at the red foiling on that. Isn't they need to bring gorgeous? back the foiling when they bring back Surfer. It's, I'm just saying. Oh, it's just glorious. So the one thing I will say uh, about the mo- the new Marvel annual sets is that they've clearly made a cost decision to move the foiling elsewhere within the set. And the reason I say that is because look at the bloody chase cards. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, good. you can tell where they've moved the foil. It's like, okay, okay, we've only got six tubs of foil to use for this set. We're going to put them on the base cards, or we're going to move them all to the chase cards. We're going to move it all to the chase cards, Travis. Okay, lovely, we'll do that. Um, you can you can <laughs> imagine that conversation happening in their studio, but in that um, tone, in, in that tone, yeah, exactly. But I I love these. This is a new insert for this year, the annual impact, and we we remember we ooed and art about these. I do love that. I do love such, that. Such a nice card. The really high gloss, mm-hmm. great foiling, good image, Beautiful. really dark. And and what tells me that they've got the QA spot on is that on any dark card like that, if there's a QA issue or or bad oh. cutting, it shows up. And this is mm-hmm. black to the edge. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's really nice. Gorgeous. Um, I love it. I think it's a really nice, really nice card. Gorgeous. I think I really I have to admit those black cards are actually really nice. Yeah, they're nice. The annual impact set, um, and the artwork on them is is. I mean, the Hulk is Immortal Hulk, so the artwork from that series is just glorious. I think it's great. Um, I think they killed that. Honestly, that's that's the highlight for me of that set that I've seen so far. And what I really like about Marvel Annual is that 
if you're going to reuse art, which they do um, on a lot of sets, if you're going to reuse comic art, so it's not original art, the thing with Marvel Annual is it forces them to use current art. So chances are it's not been on another 15 cards in yes. the last two years. A lot of rookie um, images. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, exactly. I think it's really great. I, it's lovely. I think it's nice. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think that's the way it should be too. I mean, yeah. and I think when people get further and further into Marvel, they'll go ahead and start looking yeah. at comic book artists and say, oh, when was, you know, yeah. Jim Lee's first or Tom McLaren oh. or Gabriel Delotto? Yeah. You know what I mean? Alex Ross. Chris Stevens, all this kind yeah. of stuff. Um, so they're nice. The annual impact. So annual impact, I think for me, are the insert of the set Huge. based on what I've seen. I mean, they're really nice. Um, they're beautiful. You got the humble beginnings again, which I always like. Always like those. I really. You showed me that set originally, yeah. and I was really impressed by that because yeah. I always. I think that's a really cool updated thing to have, especially for a character collector. Yeah. And they've changed it up a bit. You know, they have I see tweaked it. It the good. design from the annual 19 and 20 on the Humble Beginnings. They've also yeah. tweaked the design on the number one spot, which here, because last year they were black with a black border. Oh. Number one spot. Um, and they kind of stood out a bit more on this. So basically what they did with the last annual 19 and 20 is they, they changed a lot of the insert sets and the chase sets. Um, and they've clearly like carried that on. I think for the first three years of annual, it was one thing and now they've kind of changed it to number one spot. This is their wow. second year. Humble beginnings is their second year. Annual impact is a new one. I love them. Um, I didn't pull any rookie heroes, but they've, they've been the one constant throughout the whole um, series of annual is any well, it's, the name says it all. Rookie heroes, you know. Rookie heroes. People who've appeared in the comics, you know, that that year for the first time. Um, but you know, for someone who doesn't really read much modern comics anymore, it's kind of a really nice, relatively affordable and space conscious uh, way of catching up on comic books that have come out in the last year without having to buy. I think it's great. I mean, I think last year. That's kind of like what it was back in the day. You know yeah. what I mean? Is that you would see these characters for the first time, see what yes. their appearance was. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Annual has a really good tradition of that. I'm excited to see them. I like their holograms. Mm. Um, I like their holograms a lot, actually. Mm. Um, if Surfer was in this set. This is something I would chase for me, obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm excited about the future of Annual because I, I can see them making... I mean, well, how cool would it be if we saw like a a '90s kind of like annual set? You know what I mean? Like they did with Ages, where they had the decades. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just like a subset of annual that's like call back to the '90s or something fun yeah. like that. I don't know. Like I like to see I like to see some '90s inserts revamped and brought yeah. into annual because I think that'd be kind of cool. I think with annual, what I like about annual is that it is the and this is all relative these days. It is the affordable one. Um, it should be affordable. I think annual is brilliant. Yeah. Um, for being affordable. affordable. Yeah. Um, and I think it's good and it's quite a tight set. Um, I think with, they, they've stopped doing the SP. So the, for the first three years, so 16, 17, and then 18, 19, which was one set, um, they used to do base one to 100 and that was only in physical and then um on epac um the base one to 100 were digital and you combine them to get a different color parallel um but the um sp they did sp which was 101 to 150 and they've stopped doing that with annuals so actually you can get base one to 100 from physical release and you can get humble beginnings number one spot annual impact rookie heroes and it's like 150 160 cards that's it wow so you can get like the 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 bulk of it done and it's not too crazy where it gets crazy is things like if you're going to chase after the next level up inserts like um splash ticular and i pulled a splash ticular uh, which is splash up here. Is cool. um it is although i was looking at it i i must say i i'm not as much of a fan of them because i don't think the lenticular works as well on the internal art panels because it is internal art from a book um that's weird and it's just uh, the lenticular i've uh, yeah the mirage 
in masterpieces still does lenticular and that's great and that's like two or three characters um, no it's usually three or four characters isn't it uh, that kind of rotate and I think they've either been horizontal or, or vertical kind of rotations depending on the year um, and then of course Splash Ticular is recent but the ones that absolutely sing for me are the um, 3D covers from Marvel 80th they're stunning mm. they're absolutely yes. stunning as lenticulars go Um so I think I think for my money, I think the splash ticular, I actually I actually personally I think they're pretty weak um as as lenticulars go. When you compare them to the comic covers 3D cards from Marvel 80. Those just see, and the difference there with those is that covers. they use the text on the cover. Yes. And that yes. is not necessarily, and 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 because that's see through, it gives that dimensionality. Yeah. But when you put pl- splash sticklers together, and you're just making a lenticular out of a solid image, yeah. and there's no like foreground, middle ground, background. You really lose a lot of definition. Like I really, yeah. But look I mean, they this, nailed it for that crappy set. webcam. The Marvel Ages. The effect. Comic it's cover very well done. It's just so nice. They're and they highlighted cards. certain elements in there that would be yeah. splash and would be not. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Really smart moves on there. It's really nice. So I, I would, I would say, upper deck. I love, I love the idea that you want to put lenticulars in there. But if you were right, okay. So if annual carries on as it as it is, what I'd love them to do is like a spin off, which is kind of an, a notch up on annual, but just really tighten it, tight, make it tight, tight. Um, and what like I would tiger. love them to do is do the number one spot as lenticulars, because that lenticular effect works an absolute storm. Agreed on the comic covers. Um, and just bring it to life a little bit more. Um, I love it. I don't think this particular works with internal panels. No, I don't think it works unless there's some kind of border effect or something in there. You know what I really like is what they're doing with Marvel legends. Um, The GameStop exclusive stuff. Yeah. 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 Where it's like the cutout and there's a hologram in the background and they have like a cutout, like a, you know what I mean? Like it it looks I really think that's a great effect is to have that kind of cut out the dimensionality there yeah, yeah, because yeah. it just, it just shows the layers. It, it, you know, when you make the whole thing lenticular and it's all just one image, that's just lenticular. I don't know. It doesn't really pop. It doesn't talk to me. Yeah. I mean, I have, so I have, uh, this was my hit basically. This was the only thing over and above the, um, the inserts we've spoken about. Um, I didn't get any uh, creator corners. So they're the creator autographs of the mm, Marvel, yeah, Marvel creators. Um, but I have traded this for one of those. So the Splash Ticular is on its way to America, and I have my first um, creator corner on its way to me. Done. So I'm very happy with that because um, those, are, those are things that I will collect. Um, the other thing we didn't pull, so we've talked about the um, – Holograms, which I think are out of 49, I want to say. Um, I think you're right. That sticks in my mind because it's not 50. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, it's not. It's out, it's out of 49, not 50. Um, but they've also got, um, sorry, I tell a lie, the holograms, sorry, are out of 20 like they were last year. It's the foil board that's the foil board. Oh. So they've got, you've got two different, you've got kind of a, an SP and an SSP kind of hologram and they've got a slightly different effect going on. Oh, interesting. Whereas last year you only had the holograms, which were just out of 20. Fascinating. Um, so I haven't got my, so from last year I, I did get the black cat hologram and I got the alpha, I believe I got the number one. Um, and that's still on my EPAC waiting to ship. So I haven't actually seen that in hand, but Last year of my free boxes of annual 1920, I did pull a hologram of armor, the X-Men character, which I, I love that. traded. And it is a, it's a nice effect. It's a subtle effect because it's behind the character. Yeah. Um, so it's the same as the base and the base variant. It's just the background, which is a, a comic cover uh, on the base and the variant is just a hologram that says Marvel annual. I like them. I really like them. I debated like getting a few because I'm a, I'm a sucker for holograms. Sucker for some shiny. Yeah. I like holograms it's gotta a be done. lot. Um, so, so yeah, so they're, they're nice. I've seen those in hand. Um, the variant parallel of the base card, the thing that's interesting on this one, because last year, um, 
you, they still have the variant tier one, two, three, and four. But as with what they're doing at the moment, which I don't like at all. Sorry, Upper Deck. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to say this because I think it's rubbish. Um, they intersperse them, so you can't get a clean run. So unlike masterpieces, you can collect up to eighty-one and avoid the tier four and have a still have the numbered run one to eighty-one. Oh, with interesting. This, they, with this, like tier three, you know. Card 95 is tier three, card 24 is tier three, card 37 okay. is tier four, card 32 is tier one. Do you see what I mean? They just, they just, it's just random almost, um, but based mm. on character, I think. Um, I think last year it was the, it, the tiers were a, a lot more even in terms of the split, uh, but this right. year it appears I only got one tier four in the box. Oh, was, uh, that's a shame. Deadpool. Uh, it's a shame if you're going for them. I'm, I'm not collecting the parallel, so I'm not collecting the variants. But but if you are collecting the variants, then the tier threes, I think I've got two tier threes in the box and one tier four. So that's just in a box. So they are much rarer this year. Interesting. Last year, I'm sure I got at least two tier fours in a box and maybe four or five tier threes. So they've mm. they've made the the, the one it. different. The other thing that seems to be different this year, and this is maybe just to give it that edge of difficulty, um, um, is the creator corners seem to be more limited for certain creators this year. Ooh, that's um, always exciting. So so yeah, so I'm going to have fun tracing those down. Um, but you know what? Generally, it was a fun 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 break. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a blast. Uh, I'm glad I was here for it. How many cards did we... Well, I'd have been talking to myself. Uh, you got five cards per pack, and mm-hmm. there were 16 packs in the box. You know, nice, shiny foil wrapper. We can't go wrong with that. No, um, not at all. Yeah. So I'm... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I actually went ahead and bought... Because um, last year, I remember the one thing that I had trouble with last year is that the... Sorry, I keep pinging at my end, but I need to ping because I need to have my... Um, my my stuff open um, because I'm about to read some stuff with my screen. So apologies, people, for my pings. Um, just so thinking, Miss Captain Sonar. Um, the <laughs> I actually went ahead and bought um, a full base set and all the chase um, just to get it done. Because last year, I remember it took me about six months just to track down the last of the base cards. Oh, jeez. And, it, you know, I got three boxes and I didn't get a full base one to 100. I was still like 12 short, something like that. Um, wow. Because Yeah, and because the the physical base isn't in EPAC, I had to track it down from people who'd broken physical boxes. Mm. Um, it just took me ages. It really does. Yeah. So so this year I was like, you know what? I, I, I just can't be asked. <laughs> I just want to nail it um, straight away. So, um, so I did um for the for the price of a box um and so i've got that incoming which means now i can focus on the creator corners and done and done when it eventually comes out so you know sometimes (laughs) you just sometimes you just want to get a set done and just move on yeah i mean that's how i feel about it to be honest you know and there's pretty plates in this set apparently right i'm looking there are there are um i've seen some on ebay um more so last year for, for there were very few from the physical release that popped up on eBay and very few holograms and foils as uh, very few holograms. There wasn't, there weren't any foils in last year's. Um, there seemed to be more popping up on eBay this time. And I think it's because there's been more physical product broken. Um, Interesting. Last year I got a distinct sense that people just weren't buying as much of it, but as you know, a lot's changed and people are buying a lot, it. a lot has <laughs> people are buying anything because uh, because they're mad for it. So, um, but yeah, overall, I, I, it's a great little set. I love it. Um, oh, the battle booklets, of course. Um, I've seen some of those pop up. Those look great. The sketches, um, and they're much scarcer this time. Um, uh, but the battle booklets, they've changed the characters up. Um, the battle booklets are very prescribed characters, so I won't be getting any because obviously Black Cat's not on there, uh, yep. which I'm kind of um, happy with. Save a little money. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, I think it's a it's a nice little set. Well done, Upper Deck. Well done. <laughs> Get us a thumbs up from me. <laughs> not sure who that character's supposed to be. Um, I don't know either. But... No, no. But next year, I reckon that I reckon Surfer will be back. I'm I'm hoping Surfer is back. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice to get in on these 
other sets and mm-hmm. kind of have some fun a little mm-hmm. bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been, I've been a little bit in a uh, collecting hole, yeah. which is nice. Cause I'm not living in you've a cardboard box anymore. Yeah. But you've had catch up time. Um, in I've had catch up time, catch up time I, for all of you aspiring co- uh, character collectors out there. Catch up time is one of the most valuable things you have in this hobby. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. I can be honest. Yeah. And I don't have any, I've had and any of that. I literally, I haven't had time to, to fart and blow my nose. Um, so <laughs> not that you want to do both at the same time. No, uh, you although explode. sometimes when I do That's one the of them, the other one happens just involuntary. And my wife calls me an old woman off the back of it. She said, yeah. oh, you're such an old woman. Um, she's not wrong. To be fair. I mean, since so, the surgery, I acknowledge you as like a young man now, but you know, I don't want to <laughs> make you feel uncomfortable. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Marvel, yeah, I loved it. So, um, thanks, Upper Deck. Um, I'm a, a, a EPAC for it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm at Pack Wars, they blew it for me last year. Um, I probably won't do much Pack Wars, um, because I think the price point was a bit too much. Um, and it was just a horrific oh. experience on the um on the website because they weren't long past the upgrade and it was just so frustrating um but that'll probably be the only way you can get the plates so i'll probably need to my brother like it or not so who knows who you knows thought you were out man they yeah you back in they they do they do um can i tell you something funky i hope um, so i'm going to tell you something funky did you know that back at the beginning of january we 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 busted into the the Apple Podcasts uh, hot charts for Sweden. Sweden, I did not know this. Sweden, we all of a sudden new entry. We were thirteenth hobbies podcast on Apple Podcasts in Sweden. In we Sweden, the, yeah, and we were the sixty first leisure podcast in Sweden. Out of nowhere, we've never we've never charted in Sweden. And we to have be fair, one collector in Sweden, we I haven't guess. kept it up. So whoever it is, listen to one and then it's gone and just run away. Um, um, but yeah, I thought that was that thought that was fantastic. Maybe there was a relative or I somebody in Sweden. But we've also been regularly charting, and this is new, um, in Thailand, of all places. That I knew. You know that with our 2022 preview, so our first episode of the year, we reached number two in Thailand in the hobbies category on Apple podcast. I, I will say this, that makes a lot of sense. I had a few too many illegitimate children in Miami and they moved recently to Thailand. <laughs> I, they keep trying to contact me and I feel like the only way they can hear their father's yeah. voices through this podcast. So this makes total sense to me. I want to see daddy. I, I you it. can't, but here, listen to this podcast. But here, yeah. listen to his babbling um, of cards. And in the same week, that same episode, weirdly enough, it, it, it seems to when when they chart in hobbies, which is the category we're in, they also chart in the leisure category, and I think it's because hobbies is a subset of leisure. Um, hmm. And so we were fifteenth in the leisure category in Thailand is when we busted into it. So yeah, Thailand has a oh, huge, great. huge uh, statue community, isn't that? Isn't that I right? I think so. Yeah, but whoever's in Thailand is carried on listening because we've carried on charting in Thailand. We haven't reached that giddy height second. But um, but yeah, so well, hello to, to all of our collector, collectors in Thailand and Sweden. Well, Sweden especially, I will say, tak. Um, I don't know what Thai is for thank you, but Swedish, tak. Well, if they're um, listening, we have to assume they know English. We have to assume, well, yeah, otherwise it's a one and done thing. That I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Not a clue who that person was talking about, uh, what that person was saying even for half an hour. Um, I also wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to read some feedback we had because we've done a lot of uh, really interesting episodes, really kind of thought pieces kind of things of late. Um, and I thought it was good to kind of... Someone's touch. listening to our thoughts out there. They are listening to our thoughts. So I'm going to start with last week's, which where we interviewed David De La Rosa. David. For De the La love Rosa. of the cards. And David. David. Great. Lovely. I have to send him this card. I'll contact yes, him. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I'm going to read some, uh, some feedback on that. I'm going to start with the great Munshaw, Michael Munshaw who commented, uh, and that is that is actually his name now, the great Munshaw. As it should be. It should yeah. have been from birth, but well, I'm glad we finally erected that. I kind of that. imagine him as in, in a kind of old 
Victorian kind of, you know, the prestige, you know, that movie, uh, that Christopher Nolan movie, as that kind of magician. The great. I can see that lunch. I don't think, you know, he could if he's off. seen IT crowd, he'll understand. I don't think he has the magician look, <laughs> but he has the greatness look. <laughs> so, okay. all right. Well, he is a magician because he throws some damn magical he is, things. He, he does know magic, that does, I will say. He does. Um, so he commented um, at David S. Dot PC, which is David's Instagram handle, is not only a great collector, but he's such a nice guy as well. It's so refreshing hearing all three of you express your love for collecting and the artists that create them. Um, so thank you, Mike. Um, appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Andrew, um, and I always get your surname pronunciation wrong. I think it's Servi. Um, commented, great episode. I'm glad to see I'm not the only one feeling this social change in the group. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's real. Mm. Um, our hobby has become very popular among investors and driving up prices on these pieces of cardboard we love. Hobbyists have noticed this and want to make a buck to further their collection. I don't want to put a label on anyone, but it's clear we have a lot more investors joining. I've since seen specific PC items rise in price and make things harder on me. I don't know if it's the right move, but I've been thinking about this recently and I'm choosing to stop sharing my new items. Interesting. Uh, this is a personal choice for my little collecting corner of the hobby. You know what? I've kind of done the same. I've done the same. I think I think a lot of the old school peeps, and we're not even like the the old school, but we're a version of old school now. Um, yeah, I've I've stopped too. Um, I'm not sharing anymore either. Mm. Actually, I haven't posted something new in, in Instagram for a while. Yeah, haven't posted any YouTube content just because it's a minefield. It is. It is, and I'm you know I also. <sighs> I'm actually, you know, I'm actually at the point where I'm actually not telling people what I'm chasing at the moment. Oh, I'm not telling anybody anything anymore. That's Sorry. the end of that. <laughs> yeah, that that, um, that that came and gone. Learned my lesson. Do you know, you know when, um, you know snails, right? The animal? You're, you're aware, well, I don't know if it's an animal, more of a, is it an insect? What is a snail? Insects are animals insect. as well. Well, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but it's part of the animal an kingdom. Yeah. That's the truth. Anyway, so snails, you know, when you poke their eye, it kind of goes back in, but then it very slowly starts coming. Jesus, what are you doing to snails? Yeah, but you know when that happens? No, know? I, I know what you're talking about, but yeah. why are you poking snails? Well, I'm not, I haven't done it recently. There's other things to do with your time, Ian. I did it as a kid, all right? All right. I've wow. Now. That's I did it dark, as a kid. man. Now, when I say, when I say, I just, I usually tend to lob it over the wall. But anyway, um, and snails have feelings too. Until they obviously crunch. until they crunch. What do you call a slug? Did you? Oh my god! What did you, you look slug? on the podcast thing under Apple to see if we have snail listeners? I don't know. You know we what? probably just lost a good portion of our I, audience. I, I'm openly snailist, and I don't care who knows it. But Jesus Christ! God, do you know what we call a slug? Yeah, homeless, a slug is a snail. Yeah, a homeless snail or a hobo. <laughs> Snail. How do you have this? How is this locked away in your brain? How did the, how did the connections know. made? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, no. When you poke a snail and it goes back into yeah, the it's shell, the eye yeah, going it does in. feel yeah. like that. But it's the eye going in. It's the specific physical. Oh, the reaction. eye thing. Yeah, like that. That's yeah, where the, cool. where the, where like the, the top, tentacle yes. goes in and just it's like it's kind of there and it's kind of it it makes that sound. Out it's again, really cool. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Heath Stevens. Heath. He's he, oh, I love fella. Heath. Hey, he, yeah, he's a lovely fella. Another outstanding episode, gents, and what a perfect commentary on the evolution of the hobby. David speaks so thoughtfully about how things are changing, how he's processing, and how he recognises others are entitled to their own experience. Yeah, amen on that one. Uh, great mm -hmm. stuff and nicely played amongst so m many other worthwhile episodes. What a lovely guy. Oh, Thank you, Heath. Thanks, buddy. Um, and Heath actually chimed in somewhere else as well. Um, I'm just trying to find it because um, we've had quite a lot of introduction posts of late um and heath where is it I've, I've opened it here we go heath posted a really good story actually no it's not an introductory post it's just a really good story i just thought a, a nice positive story oh, um because you know we rare. have been there has been a lot of um sturm and drang to to to, to coin a phrase positive stories are the new pmg so it makes stories, sense. yeah uh, yeah um, the PMG, it was it. What was that thing that David Pal <laughs> Dave Palumbo said it, and you shared it before I could. Uh, Dave Palumbo said said PMGs, the real PMGs, are the friends you make along the way. I think it was Matt Fuller who made it. David posted it, and then everyone started going really? off of it. Oh, yeah, I think, I think maybe maybe I, know, I, don't know. I, I, I actually, didn't take I actually think Palumbo said it first. Maybe Palumbo did credit. first. I hope Palumbo said credit. it first because yeah. that makes it so perfect. Um, but you know, anyway, um, so Heath, um, 
this is this is kind of a separate story. So it's not it's not feedback. It's just a story. He just said uh, recently wanted to take a minute to give thanks for good people. I made free purchases on eBay back in early January. I've since come to know the seller's name is Joe. Hey, Joe. The cards were nothing to be excited over. Two mass-produced 93mm chase cards and a 94 Mary Jane. Oh, 94 was a good year for Mary Jane. Um, Very good year. But they completed a set and were special to me. As other more recent orders made their way to me, I kept in touch with Joe. He first explained that there had been issues with bad weather in his area and blew up their mail system. Next, a few weeks later, he was dealing with some health issues, but I promised, but promised to check his inventory for a replacement. Regardless of what was going on, he was quick on the reply and earnest in his response. All I could think was, well, this guy is really on top of, of it for nothing more than a $15 purchase. Joe and I had one more conversation today. He initiated it, just wanted to check one more time, and then refunds came flooding into my email. I never even had to ask. I wish I had a larger point to share here, but I'm a new guy to this group. I'm wary of thinking that I could have a larger point, but maybe what I can offer is this. I've had a crap week for a variety of small but not insignificant reasons. Signing in here is always a great tonic for me. Thanks to Joe if you're in here, and thanks to all of you for being a great place to enjoy this hobby. With all the negative things to latch onto in this world, I'm glad for the joy collecting brings. I like him. Isn't that lovely? That was lovely. I really like that. I really like that. I forgot the way he he ended that, but that's really neat. So Heath, I hope you're having a better week. Um, I hope this might bring a smile to your week. Um, And then there was some feedback also. And the reason I wanted to read this feedback was, so this is kind of mailbag time, isn't it really? Um, It is. From the week before's episode where we had Billy Vasozzi. Uh, watch Billy. Come on. and I wanted to read this feedback because Billy put up a post recently and mm-hmm. he for for all sorts of reasons uh, that I respect and hats off to he's decided to take a probably permanent break from the hobby um, yeah. so um, I just wanted to say openly thank you to Billy for burning so bright for, for the year that you were you were kind of with us uh, I know you're not going to be a stranger, but you know, no, I think, uh, I think watching me open, I think that that kind of like opening boxes and stuff is definitely taking a break, but I'm, we're going to still see Billy. We'll see. Yeah, Billy. I love Billy. Billy will be um, around. So Billy, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, a few people did uh, read some feedback for this. James Edel. Um, James is a really nice guy. He was on my Marvel. In fact, both, oh, of, yeah, these guys, actually, both of the guys that purchased were the other two contestants on Marvel on the brain with me and Billy. So it's actually quite apt. They've both commented on, on, nice. on this. Um, so James, uh, posted really enjoyed the episode and a very relevant topic for the community right now i wanted to thank watch me open for the shout out and for all your kind words about the x-men metal project uh, so james is the one who found all the original art from x-men metal universe and he it. has a great instagram and he started an amazing thing and i need to figure out what it was he's awesome Is james he's doing instagram? such good work he I did it. he's he doing instagram. it on instagram now oh i didn't know right okay well you'll have to uh, yeah james i'm um, looking well put it in the uh, tasting notes. I didn't realize he had, so I'll, I'll, I'll find that. Oh, God, the continuous God. positive feedback from the community really helped me to get it across the finish line and may inspire me to tackle some future sets. By the way, anyone interested in playing Marvel on the Brain should reach out to Billy. He's a great fi- guy and it is a very fun experience. Well, I, I don't know if he's going to be doing Marvel on the Brain, if given he's kind of down I would hope he does, for now, but, but yeah. maybe he'll do it in the future. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Tony Perna. Tony! Perna! Um, and listen to the end of this podcast for a special message from Tony. That's all I'm going to say. Um, just listen to the entire episode. It is one of the best to date. You all made some very good points about respecting one another in this hobby and acting like a human being. The hobby should be one of enjoyment and fun, not greed and backstabbing. Ian Taylor, Noren Rad, and Watch Me Open, you free rock. Tony, you're a very nice man. Thank you, Tony. He's too good to us. He is too good to us. And you know what? That's a really good. I, I did have one more thing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna read some stuff out another time um, because yeah. I think we should quit while we're ahead. And quite frankly, I've had a blast this week. Yeah, I mean, nice, I'm nice, with you. Nice, nice little week, nice little episode. Um, I tell you what. One thing I do want to remember is that there's a guy who's messaged me twice now on Instagram, and I promised I'd read his stuff out. So next we record, remind me, remind me to read out the messages that I've been getting from, and I can't find his name now. Where is it? Oh, this is really embarrassing. Anyway, 
the fella who's been lost. messaging me on <laughs> on Instagram is a really nice guy who lives in Hawaii. You'll know who I mean when I'm when I'm saying this. Anyway, I'm sure I'm going to read out his message Why? next time. He's a lovely fella, um, really nice guy. Um, Chris, here we go. Chris, that's his name. Um, Hawaiian Line 808. So I'm assuming he's in Hawaii. I don't oh, actually yeah. know. Uh, really nice guy. Yeah, he does live in Hawaii, actually. He's just he's just posted. Anyway, I'm going to read his message out next week because he's lovely. Um, uh, but and just cool. to share real quick, James, his Instagram is Marvel underscore card underscore insights Ooh, with an S at the end. That's a nice and one. And each one of his posts is the Marvel Metal card plus the comic book page or cover that is the uh, inspiration or the image awesome that they too. have in common. Wow. Okay, cool. And they're beautifully set up. He's done a great job. His wall is filled with a bunch of them. Wow. Okay. We will pop that in the tasting notes because uh, I don't follow that. So, um, James, you're about to gain some more followers, um, uh, as it should be as well. Um, as it should be. So, my friend, um, there's a lot going on in the hobby right now, as those messages of support from people will, will attest to. Um, but thank you for making our show a part of your hobby experience. As ever, please let us know if you're enjoying our podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast wherever you get your podcasts and on our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. Find us at the MCC Pod. And I will say, actually, it really helps us out if you do leave us a review. Um, on iTunes, it really helps us out if you leave us a review on Facebook because um, it kind of bumps us up and makes us more visible mm -hmm. so other people find it. Um, but anyway, until next time, Noren, it's been a blast. Thank you, my friend. Had a blast. This is amazing. Hope you enjoyed the show and also enjoy collecting. Thanks for listening to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast. Visuals and tasting notes for each episode can be found on our Facebook page. You can subscribe and leave us a voicemail via our home on anchor.fm forward slash MCCP. We're also on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms. Please take a second to subscribe, like, and review our show wherever you get your podcasts. Our podcast can be found by Googling at the MCC pod, which will also find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Our Facebook community is at MCCW, Marvel Car Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin McLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists, and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time. And remember, it's a small hobby, but a fun one. Make mine marvel and enjoy collecting. I am the listener. In this multiverse of streaming, I have listened to podcasts that were, that are, and have yet to be. Join me as I listen to the latest Marvel Card Collectors podcast and ponder the question, what the... <laughs>